Behavioral Sciences Lecture 10, Social Thinking. With the first part of this lecture, let's talk about social behavior and what that entails. Social behavior revolves around what is called interpersonal attraction, or, in simple terms, what makes people like each other. Think about people you are friends with, or people that you are fond of. You'll generally find that these factors all apply. Usually, you have similar attitudes, intelligence, background, education, religious affiliations, etc. You also share thoughts and feelings with each other. You also tend to like people who you think like you back. And obviously, being in close proximity matters. Because of these interpersonal attractions, people will develop attachments, or emotional bonds to another person. Usually a child and a caregiver, but this can be different and varied. There are four types. One is a secure attachment, which is consistent and safe. Child, children in this situation will generally show preference for their caregiver. Avoidant attachment is where there is little or no response to distress. Children in this situation will generally not show a preference for the caregiver. Ambivalent attachment is when there is mixed inconsistent responses to distress. The responses that a child in this situation will display will vary. And lastly, disorganized attachment is erratic and abusive, and the child will generally avoid the caregiver. Keep in mind, this is for a child and a caregiver, but these four types of attachments can relate from person to person as well. On the flip side of interpersonal attraction, there is aggression, which is a behavior when the intention is to cause harm or to increase social dominance. How a society views aggression and how it deals with aggression will largely dictate where the aggressive tendencies come from. Social support is the perception that one is cared for by a social network, and there are varying types. This can come from groups, peers, family, or organizations. Altruism is a form of helping behavior that usually benefits others at an individual's expense. There is still no consensus on why we are altruistic, but there are a couple theories. One is that it's, a, it's an evolved trait where we like to help people that are similar to us, so indirectly we are helping ourselves. But there's still no scientific reason as to why we are altruistic. Inclusive fitness is a measure of an individual's success in a population, and it's based on the number of offspring, the success of offspring support, and the ability of the offspring to support others. Now that we've gone over social behaviors, let's go into a little bit about social perception and how that relates to behavior. Social perception is how we generate impressions about people in the environment around us. It contains a perceiver, yourself, a target, what you are making an impression of, and the situation and context that both you are put in. The implicit personality theory states that people make assumptions about how different types of people, traits, and behaviors are related. For example, if you were to see a wealthy businessman, you might think he was studious and very industrious, but the truth can be that he just was, he just got inherited. Another option is if you see a homeless person, you might think that they were lazy or that they're addicted to drugs or other poor situations. You might not know that he fell into some serious debt or couldn't pay for some hospital bills, which led to his situation. Cognitive biases are very important to be aware of, especially in your future as a physician. Let's go over a couple. The primacy effect basically states that your first impression matters more than everything afterwards. The recency effect, on the other hand, states that the most recent information is what you will deem most important. A reliance on central traits is the tendency to organize the perception of others based on traits that matter to you yourself, the perceiver. The halo effect is the judgment of an individual's character which is effect that is affected by the overall impression of the individual. If you like the person, your perception of that individual's character is probably going to be better if you don't particularly care for them. The just world hypothesis is the tendency of individuals to believe everyone gets what they deserve. Although it's commonly misconstrued, when people say karma, that's usually what they're talking about. 
but obviously the Hindu concept of karma is a little bit more deep than that. Self-serving bias is when individuals make base their own successes as on, based on internal factors and failures based on external factors. Basically, whatever I did right was me, and that's why I'm successful, and whatever didn't go right or went poorly or failures were because of other people. The fundamental attribution error is a bias towards making dispositional attributes, attributions rather than situational ones. So again, I mentioned this example earlier, but if you see a homeless person, you might think that they were uh, just lazy or, well, had some very, made some very poor life decisions. The truth might be that their circumstance led them to that situation more so than whatever their personal characteristics were. Attribution substitution is the oversimplifying is an oversimplifying judgment when a more complex one is needed. So going back to evaluating a homeless person, you might just brush them off as saying, oh, that must be a druggie or someone who just maybe fell on the wrong side of life. But the truth is they may have fallen into a very poor circumstance and you're making a substitution and oversimplifying your judgment. This segues into our final topic for the day, which is stereotypes, prejudice, and discrimination. A stereotype is when attitude impression or an impression are based on limited or superficial information about a person or a group. A self-fulfilling prophecy is a stereotype that can lead to an expectation which creates a condition that leads to the confirmation of the stereotype. A stereotype threat is a concern or anxiety about confirming negative stereotypes about one social group. So this one's a little bit odd, but let's bring an example here. So let's say uh, you're Asian and you have a stereotype that you're good at math. Well, you might have anxiety in your math class because of the expectation that people have for you to be good at it, even though you struggle. Prejudice is an irrational positive or negative attitudes toward a person, group, thing prior to an actual experience. It's important to be mindful of prejudices moving forward through your career. Ethnocentrism involves the making of judgments about other cultures based on the values held by yours. The in-group is the group that you feel belonging to, and the out-group is one that you don't identify with. That us-versus-them mentality leads to some very catastrophic consequences if left unchecked. Cultural relativism Cultural relativism recognizes that each culture needs to be studied on its own term. At the bottom, there's a comic about this. To a Islam-based culture, having women walk around in bikinis and sunglasses can be viewed as a very extreme thing and unacceptable. However, to the Western concept, having women walking around with hijab can be viewed as just as offensive. It's important to recognize both of these cultures and take them within their own contexts when you're studying. Discrimination is when prejudicial attitudes cause individuals or groups to be treated differently. Individual discrimination, to put it simply, is when one person discriminates against the person or a group. When it leads to a, where it leads to a problem is when it's an institutional discrimination, which is when the discrimination is done by large groups and organizations. This can lead to certain groups that are being discriminated to be limited in scope and mobility. So that'll conclude our 10th lecture in the Behavioral Sciences module. We only have two more to go, so hang in there.